Hello everyone, I think we're live. I think everything is working. I will wait and make sure you guys have audio. Um, at the end of the stream, I'm super excited. I wanna show you guys, okay, audio and everything's good. I'm gonna show you after we're done with the art project, besides answering your questions and fixing my chair, apparently. Um, come on chair, what is wrong with you? I'm going to um, show you, I'm gonna be making some changes to my studio, which is funny because I didn't that long ago have a studio update. Yeah, I'm changing it all. And I'm gonna show you photos of the feeling I'm gonna do, some of the stuff I'm gonna be doing, like painting my windows. It's gonna be cool, I promise. It's not as tacky as it sounds, a little bit tacky, but it's gonna look great on video. So I wanna tell you all the stuff and show you some of the examples. I'm super excited. We'll be talking about that after the art project. Maybe you can get some ideas for your own. Maybe you can give me some ideas on how to do some of the crap I want to come up with. So anyway, yay, I'm excited. Tonight we are working in pen pastels and colored pencil. I've already drawn out my leopard on, I used tra scene and transfer paper, just transferred that onto my paper. I'm working on the Canson Me Tens. This is a black paper and that is the smooth side. And we are already starting. We've got Kristen said for the doggos, happy puppers. They don't even know. Do you boys want a super chat? Thank you so much, Kristen. I think I called you Kristen again, didn't I? This time we're going to mix in, though, a little bit so it does not get so gassy. We've got a few of these Cheez-It type treats. There you go. We haven't had one of those in a while, huh? We need to get more. Good boys. Oops, we don't need you drooling on that. Okay, go lay down. Thank you so much. The boys definitely thank you, although they're not going to go lay down now. Boys, lay down. I actually had someone leave a comment last week. He's been banned from the channel because... I'm sorry if you don't like puppies, you're just not in my life. But he um, was mad. What's up with the dogs in the video? I'm just here to watch you sketch. And he was also mad that he thought I was bashing uh, my fellow artists, including him. Whatever, dude. Go, go take your, your anti-dog rhetoric somewhere else. Anyway, um, I just thought that was kind of funny. So on to the leopard. I'm going to start with my pan pastels, and we will start building up the base layers. He'll start looking really fuzzy out at like, well, not in focus, and we'll just build up to the details when we start in with the colored pencils. Exactly, Karen says, don't trust anyone that doesn't like animals. I am 100% with you. You don't need to be here, sir. <laughs> We've got from CM, CSM Steph said, wake them puppers up again. Holy crap, that is one heck of a super chat too, boys. You want two Super Chats? You get a cheese it and a regular one for that one. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. You just bought them some fancy treats this weekend when I go shopping. Huh, you guys are gonna get the biggest bag of treats for that Super Chat? That was a big one. We'll give you, I know which ones you want because your favorites are kind of expensive. We'll get you a bag of those. They're a soft chew and they love them. Good boys. Thank you so much. Okay, boys, go lay down. You got it all, Gibson. Go lay down, go on, lay down, lay down. Gibson's doing a little bit better this week on listening to me, kinda. Oh, wow, that was weirdly fast for him. Okay, on to the project. Let's grab, I'm going to be using my soft tools to apply the pan pastels with. And I've already got some, see how they're kinda dirty from last week? Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to mix those in. These colors work fine. Um, I'm going to start with, let's see, what do I need? I'm going to start with the tans, the lighter colors around the face, and then we'll work to these cooler tones back here. Actually, it's not even so much that they're cooler. They're just not as saturated as we move back there. I'll pull the magenta in when we get to that point. So I'm starting with my burnt sienna. And let's mix some white in with that. So I'm just pulling that. A little bit, where is my bird sienna? Yeah, it shows up on there. I'm gonna flip this around though because that is gonna weird me out. That is not the way my colors are normally positioned. There we go. So just mixing those two colors and I'm just mixing right in the, um, right on top of the pan pastels themselves. I don't care if these mix together or get a little bit muddy, it doesn't matter. People get really weird about wanting it to stay super clean. I mean, you can go that route if you want. It just doesn't matter. Like it's not, if you have a little bit of color here, it normally, like you can see, I've got some in my white. It does not really make a difference. When I'm working on another project and I don't want that color, just wipe it out. 
No, it's too much white. There we go. I don't care if I cover up the spot. Actually, you can kind of see the spots through this. So I'm just going to go over all of it. I'm going to be careful around the edges. I would rather not go all the way to the edges and have to fill that in later with my pencils than to smudge onto the background. Because I would like that background to stay pretty um, clean. If it gets too messy, like if it starts, it actually, no, that was just from the transfer paper. If it did get messy, I can just take black and go over it so it's not a big deal. Like it's easy to cover, but why not make my life a little bit easier? Oh yeah, can you see the spots right through that? That makes my life easier. I'm really glad those are showing. I'm not gonna be as glad later on when I'm trying to hide them with my black pe pencils, but whatever. I'm gonna take advantage of it for now. And that comes right around the jaw. I'm still using a little bit of white mixed in with this, not a ton. Let's see, this comes around this way. I can be pretty sloppy. Man, I'm glad these spots showed through. That makes me like it so much easier because I can just go through this a lot faster. I mean, not that I couldn't just freehand the spots in later, but this is easier. Oreo Beagle, aren't you the one who paid for my M-Gram acrylics? They're actually, I just had them earlier. I need to do the project with them. They're sitting right here. Did I show you? Um, yeah, paid for that with a super chat from, I think it was Oreo Beagle, wasn't it? Uh, said, I'm looking forward to your M-Gram acrylic review. I need to do them also. You boys want another super chat? <laughs> They're way ready for it. Back up. You're getting a little close to my tea and I don't want you drooling in my tea. Oh, we finally finished that bag. There's your Cheez-Its. Thank you so much for the super chat. That will have to be soon. I have so many projects coming up that I'm really excited for. So that, that's definitely one of them. Go lay down, lay down. Thank you. Uh, say thank you to Oreo Beagle. Okay. That is the weirdest looking Jaguar ever right now. What good boys. Do you see how good Gibson's being laying down quickly this week? Much better than last week's behavior. We've been working on it. So let's see, we'll pull this down just a little and we'll switch to white. And then back here, I'm gonna be pulling a little bit of magenta in with my color. Okay, I'm gonna get that in just a moment, Rick. Said Wade and Gibson are media sensations. Everyone knows that. Let me get this part in and we will definitely be rewarding them for that. So this has some um, magenta mixed in with it. So I cooled it down just a bit. Actually, I may pull a little bit of ultramarine blue to, which will create sort of a grayish tone mixed in with that raw sienna. It's funny, I'm sitting here trying to focus on this and I'm like, I can't wait to tell the boys they're getting another one right now. So fun. Okay, a little bit of color. Before I start with the white, we go <laughs> they're gonna be like, what in the world is happening? Gibson knows, he's like, it's coming. Oh, cow, lay down. I did not say, nope, lay down, lay down. You wait until you get the word, lay down. Thank you so much, Rick. They're looking at, they're, you can't tell, but they're actually looking at me really intently. Okay, come get a super chat. There you go. Good boy. Oh, that was a nice one, Wade. You didn't chop my hand. Good boy. Those good boys. Oh, you are making a drooly mess on that floor. Go lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Or just keep standing. Go lay down, spoil boy. Cow. You are being a bad cow. Turn around. I know it's hard. Wait, down. Sorry if that clapping my hands was loud. It's the equivalent of saying their middle names. They don't have middle names. I guess bad cow's first name could be the bad and cow. Anyway, moving on. Focus, Lisa. So now let's see. I'm going to pull, mm, I don't want to do it on that one. Let me rinse this, or not rinse, rinse this brush. I'm going to wipe this brush off because it had a lot of black on it. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue. Not too much. I'm going to let that blend. See how that kind of neutralizes? 
it tones it down. What it's doing is creating a sort of grayish tone because it's mixing in with the reddish or the orangey tones that were there. So those two just softly mixing together is giving me that kind of fading into the background, a little bit of a shadow, we'll pull that up here. And I'm gonna want that mixed in with the white so I can actually, with that same brush, pick up the white so that that blue will naturally mix in with it as I come through here. That's actually gonna need to be a lot darker. I'm just gonna block that in first and then I'll worry about the shading on top of it. Okay, I can still see the spots pretty well. So pull that white up. Yeah, I'm not pushing very hard here. Um, Linda says, how thick are you putting the pan pastels on and how do you push for blending? I am not pushing at all. I'm just letting the pan pastel almost float on the paper. I'm not pushing hard. I'm not scr scrubbing it in there. If you're using a paper that has more tooth, you may have to put more pressure and kind of do a little bit of scrubbing, not too much. The soft tools don't want you to be very rough with them. So you'll make these last a lot longer if you're not pushing hard with them for sure. But yeah, I'm not pushing very hard at all. Very, very light touch with these. This is much wider here. I'll blend that down just the way the light's hitting. Okay, let's pull up a bit of the raw sienna and magenta, or burnt sienna. And if you have any questions like about any medium, go ahead and ask them now. I'll be answering those at the end of the tutorial. And as always, you can bid on this guy if you want to own him. The link is in the video description if you're in the US. And that's the cheapest you're gonna get one of my pieces. Um, honestly most of the fee goes to charge the shipping fees and the I'm actually not making much on those it goes to shipping fees and um, packing materials just keeping this soft so you can get a pretty good deal if you want to own all leopard but you can wait until you see what he comes out like the auction ends at 10 central time okay let's see so we are at hot mess stage. Let's decisions. I'm going to pull a little bit more white right in here. I don't know why whenever I'm using a lighter hand, it makes me feel like I need to use a lighter voice. I have to be quieter. There is no logic behind it. Okay. A little bit more of the magentas and actually I'm gonna pull a little bit of the blue as well. Just kind of making a muddy mess in here so I get this nice shadow. I think I could use a little bit more blue. And a little bit more. Too much. I knew that would happen. Oh, that actually looks really pretty though. I'm gonna leave mine a little bit more saturated because that is pretty. And then we've got some of the fur in here. I'm not going to do too much because that's all going to be with the white. We've got the white in here. Let's get the base. And then the fur will get pulled out from that. Okay. We'll get the, oh, I forgot one spot here. Have to be really careful because this brush, I can't really see what I'm doing. Don't go outside of the line. Yay, that was a success. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to one of these angled brushes and I'm gonna use this to add the spots with black. Now here, I do wanna look at the reference photo and try to go fairly close as far as which direction that should move. You can see I did not put in whiskers yet. You're gonna be tempted and want to put in whiskers because it always looks so good. Keep that for the very end. If you put in whiskers now, you're gonna be working right over it. Okay, so now let's look at where the fur goes. Okay, 
here it switches this direction. So that's the direction I want it to look fluffy. Again, not pushing very hard. I'm pushing a little harder as far as loading this in the pan pastels though. Like it's, I'm using, I'm pushing harder to load the soft tool than I am, not super hard, but it is a little bit more pressure in that I find than I put on the paper itself. Now the cool thing here, if you want extra spots, add extra spots. Like it does not need to be exact. Actually, we wanna to try to get the fur to go in about the right direction though, even at this stage. Now, most of this black around here will be cut off by the mat. This guy will come in, let's see, do I have one over here? Hold on, let me show you how much of this gets cut off. He gets centered, he'll be, um, it's a five by seven. So the overall size with the mat, this is how much ends up showing. So just so you're, you see why I've got that much black blank spot, which is a good time because we have from Kathy Davis says, Hold on, we'll get them on camera. Says, they deserve another treat. They are being such good boys. Thank you, Kathy. You too, Gibson, you can come get a treat. He said, you didn't actually say super chat though. So I wasn't sure. Good boys. Very tasty, huh? Say, thank you, Kathy. I read that right, yeah, yeah. Okay, go lay down. Wade, you're done. Yours is all chewed up. You go lay down. Gibson, lay down. Good boys. You're doing so much better this week. So proud of you, Gibson. All the way down. All the way down. Down. Just as I say he's doing better. He actually is still doing better. I don't know if you remember last week. He was not wanting to lay down when he was told. Thank you again. Okay. Spots. Uh, let's see, this one curves around, and then we've got the little spots inside. If you are following along, don't rush this. If this takes you two days, it takes you two days. Have fun with it. Just take your time. So we've got a big back black glob right behind the ear there. Same thing over here. And I don't need this perfect. Like it's gonna get darker when I come through with the pencils. I'm missing a big spot here. Now I have to add a little bit more on areas where the pan pastels might be a little bit heavier because this is automatic, like naturally it's just gonna mix in with whatever's there. So if I have a lot of pan pastel on there, it actually makes my work, work a bit harder because the black would be mixing with those light colors. But I don't have it on super heavy, so it's not as big of a deal. I mean, you can see kinda, it's a little bit lighter. some little guys in there so I can get the hint of some of these. Let's 
see there's that one there's a little shadow there make that a little bit bigger and onto the head spots I don't have all of those drawn out, so we'll just go for close. I do want to watch, there's a shadow right down the center of the head. We'll get that in there so we don't lose that spot. These I'm not really worrying about the direction because that there's not well one the fur is really short but that'll be done with the pencils this is too tiny to worry too much about it make some of those a little bit bigger they're getting a bit all to the same size there. Okay. I think we're pretty good. That works as a base and then everything else. Oh, not everything else. I need to fill in the eye and the nose. So you get a bit in here. A little bit of a shadow as we come up here. Missed a couple spots. Okay, for that nose, I'm gonna do the same thing, magenta with a bit of that burnt sienna. Probably should add a little white, we'll see. I know this works. I'll add white highlights then with the pencils. And for the eye, that burnt sienna and some white should make for an okay base. And then I'll clean that up with the pencils. Okay, I think that scary stage is good enough to move on with pencils. So let me move all of this out of the way. And you can do this with just pencils. It just takes a lot longer, but it'll still look just as good. This will give a little bit of a softer look a lot easier. Um, I'm going to turn that camera off over here. You can't see it anymore anyway. Okay, hopefully that'll give, have a little bit less pressure on the computer going forward. And let's see, what do I need? Oh, I need to mist this with my fine mist sprayer, actually. No, I'm gonna do that with a white pencil. Um, so I've got my Spectrafix and it's in a fine mist sprayer. If you spray it just with the Spectrafix out of the bottle, the water drop or the droplets are just too wet. This will give you a much finer mist. So I'm just gonna lightly go over that. I'm going a little bit heavier than what I would recommend you do, just because you could get heavier spots that are harder to blend out. I'm going heavier faster just to save time. Okay, 
Now, using the hairdryer not only sped things up, it also makes it so that the paper, when it kind of warps from the Spectrafix, will fl dry flat into shape because of it being taped down at the edges. And this is taped down with an acid-free uh, pH neutral tape so that I'm not leaving any tape residue, even though, yeah, you remove the tape, but it leaves residue. And if that residue is not pH neutral, that could cause issues over time as far as the work being archival. So there we go. Okay, drink of tea. Oh, that's good. Decaf green today with um, a little bit of honey. Okay, let's start. I'm just gonna start with the eye and move my way out. So I'm gonna put a piece of glassine under this so I can rest my hand without messing up. I won't get any oils from my skin on the, this and um, no smudging. So all around cover up your work. Let's see, let's start, I'm gonna go with white. I've got Van Dyke Brown. I'm actually gonna use a lot of the color, same colors I did for the, if you saw the uh, second part of the Patreon colored pencil, Collie, which was very, very detailed, but I'm using the same pencils, same colors really. And let's see, let's sharpen the black. And I'm just using a Coom, a little Coom metal sharpener. These are my favorites. So let's clean things up now. I'm gonna start with the shadow right under here. You wanna get a shadow on the underside. This is gonna help him not look like he's staring at you and super scary. We're going to, um, you want the shadow from the upper eyelid there and then you'll have your highlight down here. Unless it's like an owl that is supposed to be big and starey. Pulling that brown down. And then this is really dark, so I just fill that in with that one. And let's take the black again. I wanna clean, create a nice, sharp, clean line. So I'm pushing harder there because I want this line to be really clean right around the eye. So it circles there. We come out to a little bit of a point over here. And then this will kind of fade up. Some of this breaks up into the fur. So the dark will pull out a little bit. I'm using my polychromos for two reasons right now. One, it's not that dark. And so where I'm kind of getting that, like the light fade with the brown here, I don't want it to be super opaque. So polychromos is better because it's going, being an oil-based pencil, it's going to be a little bit more translucent. And I know that Derwent Lightfast says theirs is, is oil-based. In practice, it, they're all wax and oil-based. They just happen to have more wax, like a lot more wax in the polychromos. So. Um, I, that makes it super confusing. But these also sharpen to a finer point. So if I need something super opaque, then I'll go over to one of my pencils that has a higher wax content. Get a little highlight there. But for these, where I want it a little bit more translucent, plus I want super sharp pencils, they're gonna hold their point better. So these are a good choice for what I'm doing tonight. And I'll use some of my other pencils too. Like if I need a different color, then I can switch um, to one of those pencils. But for the most part on this, a lot of what I'm doing, the polychromos is gonna give me really nice results. I've got Mars uh, Violet, which is one of my favorite, favorite colors. I use it in so many things. I'm gonna use this for the gray. So this is my Derwent Lightfast, but it's gonna be a little bit, well, a lot more opaque. It's actually one of my most opaque pencils, the Lightfast pencils are. But that color is just so nice. It's a violet, like a, a grayish violet. And it's perfect for so many things. So that's why I'm gonna use that, even though it, I just talked about wanting more, um, the sharper lead. Sometimes one of these other colors is just gonna work better for you. Just on color alone. I'm pushing pretty hard. Now anywhere I push hard, I have to keep in mind, I can't really do a lot of layering on top of that because I'm damaging the tooth of the paper. And I'm watching which direction the fur is moving. Also, we have from Phyllis says, good boy, did I move? No, we're good. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, we're good. Do you boys want another super chat? I think that's yes. Thank you, Phyllis. Back up, back up. I can't get to the treats when you're standing over them. You came too close. See, thank you, Phyllis. Very tasty. Let's see if they'll lay down on their own or if they'll just stand here. They may just stand here. 
Yep, you're gonna stand here. Go lay down, lay down. Go on, Gibson, lay down. My dreams were crushed in an instant of hoping they'd be like, okay, time to go lay down on their own. Nope, go lay down. Not unless I tell you, huh? I tried. Wouldn't that have been convenient? So we've got a little bit of a highlight over here and this fans out. Thank you again, Phyllis. We've got a shadow too. So let's look under here. We've got a clean line. We've got a shadow right here. And then this comes down a little bit. And we've got some spots right under it. Now my colors that I'm going to be using for most of the lighter colored fur, I uh, got sandstone and Mars orange, which were also the colors I used for the tan portion of the collie. So let's get you and you sharpened. You are my sandstone, so let's start with you. That is the lighter one, but see how opaque that is? And I can get little bits of fur coming out there. And I'm just kind of starting with the eyes and working my way out. I think I'd like a little bit of sandstone in the eye too. Let's pull a little in. Oh, that's pretty. Again, pushing a lot harder where I want that to be super light. And if I want it even brighter, I'll switch over to the Derwent Light Fast. So we've got the little hairs. Switch this direction. They're short. Watch the direction and the length. And I'm not trying to fit every single bit of fur in here. Obviously, this is small. I just need to get the hint of fur. So make sure they're clumping and clustering together. <laughs> from Kelsey says fat hounds do you boys want another super chat I'm too lazy to switch the screen here you go whoops only because if I keep switching the screen I think at this point I'm never going to finish this thank you so much no oh bad cow maybe I need to switch the screen bad cow's like you can't see me so I'm just going to stick my nose in the treat bag go lay down that's why you're the bad cow lay down go lay down rotten dogs thank you Kelsey Okay, lay down, Gibson. Okay. And I'm taking that sandstone. Again, I'm pushing pretty hard. Knowing that I'm not planning to do a ton of layering, I would rather push hard and have like a really solid, heavy brush stroke or pencil stroke that isn't, like if I use a light hand, it ends up being a bit grainy and gritty, which is fine if you're doing a lot of layering, but when we've got an hour to get a project done, an hour and a half, I'm gonna, go with what happens faster and just, yeah, I'm not doing a lot of layering. So I'm definitely pushing a lot harder than I would if it was something where I was building up something more realistic. This will be more stylized. So it'll look like fur, it's just not every bit like what I did on the collie. Well, the collie was still just getting the hint of fur, but more than this. I'll do the white first and then come through with the sandstone. It switches direction. It's moving back now. And then it fans up this way. See, again, it changes constant. This is one of the biggest problems that people have when they're working on, unfortunately, this is kind of blurry. I don't know if I can fix this. But when they're working on something with fur, they will do a couple of pencil strokes and think, wow, that looks good. I'm just going to keep doing that same pencil stroke everywhere. And it no longer looks good. It looks really flat. Let me see if I can. No, that doesn't help at all. Someday they are going to have better cameras for this. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that is the best it's going to get. Oh well. It's way, actually, let me pull this over. I think I can show you on this camera. I'll remove this. I want to show you the detailing. It's a lot sharper than what that. You can see the detailing in the fur there. So much sharper than what it looks like on that other camera. It looks horrible tonight and I can't fix it.
but there is strands of fur. I'm just watching the direction I'm going in. Somebody invent a better camera. Well, see, what's bad? This camera is great, but I can't, and I have two of them to use for this. My computer couldn't handle it. So yeah. Okay, it did not like when I tried to put it over here. So that's why it's over there instead, which is not as helpful as I would like. Just again, watching the direction of that fur. It's a little bit brighter here. As I move down the nose, see how it turns? So it was going this direction and it turns. So it's facing down as we move down towards that nose. Sorry, hold on, itchy eye. in there. I am not pushing hard here though because I want just tiny little pencil strokes. If this looks a little grainy and gritty, that's fine. This is like so short that that look would actually be good for this. And then it goes up that way back around this direction. If you overdo this, he's going to look too much like he stuck his finger in a, or his paw in a light, um, an electrical outlet. So don't do too much here. We want this to be a bit soft. We want to make sure these are overlapping, kind of clumped and clustered together. Again, I'm going fast because, of, well, one limit on the time, the live stream, but I've done first so many times that I'm able to go a lot faster than I used to be able to. So don't feel like if you're going slow that you're too slow, you're not good at this. It has nothing to do with how good you are at art. Just the more you do, especially if it's a, I've, any subject I'm pretty quick on, but this is something I've done so many times that I can go through a lot faster. That comes with time and with practice. So don't let that frustrate you or make you make it feel like I'm, I can't go that fast, so I'm not as good. That is not the case at all. Yeah, <laughs> Joseph said, did you use your flashlight? My flashlight. <laughs> so I'm taking, this one is Polychromos Terracotta. I'm gonna make that transition with the right in here. And then it'll move into or uh, black. Again, I'm pushing harder with that black. Okay. I'll be doing a lot more with the spots with the black later. Right now, I'm mostly focusing on my highlights, or the, not the highlights, but the lighter fur. Now, if I, if you, or me, if I wanted this to be really detailed, really accurate, I'm gonna work one little square inch at a time. I'm not gonna be going through that this fast. Slow down and work on one little area. I had a student once. She had been with me for a bit, so she had done a few pieces, but they were never, like breathtaking, amazing, oh my gosh, that's uh, awesome. She came in one day and she decided she wanted to do this otter floating on his back. And it's like, and she's working in acrylics with wet fur and it's like, ooh, that's gonna be challenging for you. But she was excited about it and I'm telling you, you will learn faster if it's something you're excited about. So we're like, okay, what I did for her is I took a piece of paper and I cut out, like actually cut out, it was one or two square inches, I think it was one, it was little, and did that on the wet fur, the reference photo, and for her painting. And that was the only corner she worked, or the little box, that is all she worked on before she moved on to the next one. Her finished project, or project, I would have been thrilled to claim it as my own. It was phenomenal. Not because, I mean, what she had done before was good, it was good, but not phenomenal good. All, the only change, night and day, breaking it down into one little square inch and just copying the abstract shape she saw. Oh man, did that look good. So I know I often talk about breaking it down into one little square inch. It really makes a difference. And then you're really focusing on the abstract shapes of your project and not, I'm drawing an ear and it's not what an ear looks like. What our brain thinks something looks like and what it actually looks like are not 
usually in the same ballpark. Is this actually white? Yeah, that one is white. Sometimes there are colors that look kind of whitish, but not completely. Okay, let's see. We've got Burl, watch the direction. It turns. We've got kind of a circle going around here. I don't need it exact, but I do need it close. Look at that reference photo. We've got kind of two sections. This is short, so a lot of this I'm just doing little dots, and overlapping those dots. Because the fur, not just being short, but a lot of this is aimed at the viewer. So if it's aimed at the viewer, you're not seeing that side definite stroke. You're seeing the front, the, the tip of the fur. So it's just a dot is what you would see. And that's what a lot of this is. And that helps get, give us a more three-dimensional look. Um, because the fur is obviously should be at different angles. Thing. So it's kind of aimed at the viewer here. Not all of it, some is, is bent down. I'm gonna break up, I've got that white line from the um, tra uh, tracing paper. I'm gonna break that up right now. Let's get some sandstone in here. Pushing again pretty hard. Got a little bit coming up in here with that lighter tan color. And I don't need it to be, here's the thing with color. Does not need to be exact. Go for close, about, you know, go for values. There was somebody who posted in a beginner, it was an acrylic painting group. And he was saying how he was ready to give up, which is sad, but he was ready to give up because he can't mix the perfect color. Trying to do an ocean scene, he wanted this perfect specific color, couldn't get it. And so he wants to give up because he's frustrated. And it's like, cart before the horse. The color, when you were a beginner, the color doesn't even matter. Don't even worry about it, go for close. Close is fine. Worry about the technique, worry about the values. Don't worry about mixing the perfect color. If you are worried about the perfect color, you are just not focused on the right thing and you're gonna be frustrated. The color is not that big of a deal. Work on your details, work on your lights and your darks. That is what's going to make all the difference in the world in your work. But if you sit there overly focused on something that doesn't matter, you're not focused at all on the things that do matter. So you have to get out of your own head thinking, and I get it, like, and it's not just you. If you've ever felt that way, it is not just you. It is completely normal to be overly focused on if I just knew the color, if I just knew how to mix that color. Color doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a little bit to do with it, not very much. It is mostly your values, how light or dark things are. If it was all about color, then black and white paintings I've got, well, you can kind of see part of it behind me, not well. One of my best paintings is a black and white. Actually, a few of my best paintings are black and white. They look super realistic because the values, not because the color. The color isn't what's important. And it gets, it's gonna be very frustrating if you're overly focused on something that doesn't really matter and you're having a hard time getting it right. That's one of those things that sort of comes on its own the more you paint and draw. You just start getting used to the color and blending and working with it. But you overly focus on it and you are not gonna be having a good time. And that would be so sad to see this guy give up on art because he's focused on the wrong thing. That uh, gray doesn't show up. I need to get a lighter gray. I still want polychromos. Um, this one should work. This is warm gray four. And if it doesn't work, honestly, it's gonna be close enough because color doesn't matter. How do, uh, I, how do you do the amount of pressure you use? How do you use, I'm, I'm not sure the thing, um, how much pressure I'm using. I'm not sure what your question is, but I'm gonna ranch for a bit on give pressure with your pencils. I figure out the pressure that I need to do by trial and error. I'll push a little harder and go, oh, too hard. And I try not to push too hard if I know I'm gonna layer. I don't wanna push too hard because I flatten the tooth of the paper. I'm not going to get additional layers. So ideally, I want to use a light hand pretty much whenever possible. Um, if I'm getting to the end, like right now, I know I'm not gonna need a lot more hairs in there. I'm gonna push harder with that white. Well, one, because that's the only way I'm gonna get that white to show up because white prism or polychromos, I said prismacolor. That's just blasphemy. Um, doesn't. Uh, show up well 
because it is more translucent, but it's also gonna give me a sharper, crisper line. If I want a sharper, crisper line, I wanna add more pressure, but I can't layer well on top of it. So you've got these pros and cons. You have to know what your plan is for the piece so you know, can I push hard yet? Because I do, it. usually at the end of any given section, I'll start pushing harder. You just don't want it too early on. And if you do too light, like right now I'm not pushing very hard, I'm just kind of tinting, pushing that hair back in a few of these darker areas, it ends up being a bit more grainy and gritty, which usually I don't want on the end result of something. Here's a little bit different because of what I'm doing. But um, that light hand, I will usually only do if I'm gonna do many, many, many layers and then blend with OMS. I'm not doing that right now, so that's why I'm not using a lot, like a light hand on most of this. Most of this project, it's kind of a one and done layering thing. So I am going to push a lot harder as I work through. But like if I push really hard with the black pencil and I wanna come through with sandstone, if I push hard with black, it's like right there, I'm trying to go over it, it's not showing up because the black is there. So I have to know that if I put, if I go too crazy with one of these other colors pushing hard, if I put a color on top, especially if it's a lighter color, it's not gonna really show up well. And a lot of this, practice. The more you draw, the more it just, you don't even realize you're doing it. You just naturally will avoid pushing hard because you remembered from last time, it didn't, you couldn't get a color to uh, show up well on top. And I think that happens a lot with art. We don't even realize we're learning stuff or we're learning important lessons. You're, you just naturally will avoid doing something that limited you previously. Again, getting the texture of the fur in there. Right now he is looking like he handled my flashlight stun gun. Okay, let's see. This actually is a much, is this you? Wait, no, this is, this is you. This is you, okay, this actually can be filled in more. And I'll start with the black. We'll pay attention to which direction that moves. But again, if I'm pushing hard, I'm not gonna get highlights over that. So that's why I kinda don't wanna go too early with the black, unless I know for sure that area needs to be dark. So I'm gonna shade right over that part of the eye a little bit more. Okay, back to sandstone. Let's continue working through here. So we have the light. Getting the hints and little tiny lines. I mean, they're almost dots. Not quite, but close, and they have to overlap. Now these are just dots, just getting that texture in there. Here it starts getting a little bit longer as we move away from the nose. The fur around the nose is super, super short. We've got a light area here. I'm just gonna use a light hand because grainy and gritty actually works for how short that fur is. Give it a little bit of a highlight, just using that light, the white with a very light hand that mostly mixes in with what's there. And then as we come through, pushing a lot harder here. And as I move down, We've got a shadow right inside the mouth. Actually, that gray doesn't show up very well. I'm gonna switch over to the black and just let that not push as hard so it stays kind of light up against how hard I put the white down. to the jaw, see how the fur changes direction. It's a lot longer. And then up here, build that. This fur is a lot shorter. Again, look at your photo. What direction is that fur moving in? We've got these rows with that white. Pull that in. We've got another area here where it's a little bit lighter. And see how this line, that row, we're gonna follow through. And if you're looking at your reference photo going, what in the world are you even talking about? I don't see what you're seeing. Draw more. 
you will start seeing it. So even if something I'm saying goes over your head and you're like, that doesn't even make sense. It will make sense the more you paint and you draw, the more you're working at it. Um, the, all the weird stuff you hear a teacher say will make more sense the more projects you complete. So if you're right now going, ah, I don't understand it, that's too advanced for me. No, that's what you need to hear because it will start to make sense the longer you do it. else we have that row this row is more defined and then we've got a few little ones coming up and then we have really spread out and then up in the orange and then these ones curve up a bit I'll, give, I'll use the black just to get a hint of some of that fur in there. You see, I've got a little bit of a triangle there. It comes down. I need to pull the whole, oh, I need to toss the white, apparently. We're going to pull this white fur down just a bit. I'll be able to do the, the whiskers soon, and that makes it look so good. I love doing the whiskers makes such a difference in a piece like this. Okay, let's get start building up. Uh, now I'm going to keep working on the face. I'm going to sharpen. Actually, do I have a white pencil? That would make my life so much easier. I think I need to go grab a new white pencil that's not a nub. Do I have one in here? You're good enough. Better than that one anyway. Because I'm not going to go through the trouble of looking for another pencil extender, which I probably won't find right away. Okay, let's see. So here, again, looking at the direction that that fur is moving. If I'm a little off, it's not a big deal. Just go for close. The point is you should be paying attention to which direction. Okay, so let's see. This, and you can get this reference photo over the link is in the video description it's free it's on i put it on patreon but it's free you don't have to be a member to get it i got this reference photo from unsplash it's got some little dark areas just kind of in here where there's this fold on the fur and let's see which direction are we moving? It's down this way. I've got a spot where it isn't exact on the photo, so my line is going to be a little bit different there. First starts getting longer. A little bit. I'll start pulling other colors and shadows in this in a moment after I get this kind of built up. Oh, I'm already super happy with how this guy's coming out. Now, I'm not pushing as hard here. I want this to be a little bit softer. So if it's a little grainy and gritty, that is fine for this soft fur. I'm okay with that look. Do make sure that they overlap. Again, we'll come back through with the black pencil, which will help darken some of this up. See how I'm letting this overlap some of the black? Now, if I had pushed really hard with that black spot there, I'm not going to be able to get the white wouldn't have shown up like it did, and that's why I'm holding off on the black. It's a little bit shorter right here, and it gets a little longer. It almost moves in little rows. See how I've got kind of a row there, a row here, and I've got that darker area in between. It's the same thing when you're drawing like grass. It moves in rows. Look at that when you look at a reference photo. You see this pretty grass in the fields. There's rows of shadows and highlights, and that's really what we're doing here for a lot of the fur. Curves back down this way. More dense. We'll switch over to 
the sandstone in just a second. Got a couple of rows I want to hit with the highlight area first. Okay, let's pull some sandstone in. And we have, I just looked at the right exact spot, which thank God my hand needs a quick break. Um, from CSM, Steph said, has a super chat from 1999, said puffers look like they are in a coma. Go wake me up, please. Do you guys want a super chat? My hand sure needs that break. So I am thanking you as much as the puppies are right now. Oh, arthritis. God, I'm old. I say I'm old, but I've had arthritis in that hand since I was like 16, so. There you go. Good boys. The best part was when I'd go to the doctors, like they didn't even consider arthritis as a thing. They're just like, oh, it's from overuse because you play violin. Oh, my mom thought that was hilarious because she knows I don't practice. Never have because I, well, me. So yeah, that was like, yeah, it's not, trust me, it's not from overuse on the violin. Clear. It was, we, my family gets arthritis at a young age, so that's what it was, but it was still kind of funny. Gibson. We're not going to stare at the floor. Go lay down, sir. Gibson. Don't make me use mean mom voice. Thank you so much. Let's have tea to extend this break over my hand a little bit. Okay, and I want to show you too. Let's, again, taking advantage of giving my hand a little break. Where, how much more detailed that really is. So if you were considering bidding on that, wait, back a little, I can just see it better. You've got a lot of great texture in that fur in there. Unfortunately, because, you know, webcam, um, it's a little bit more blurry than on here than it really is. It definitely is one of those that looks way better in person. Okay, back to work. Stop stalling. A little bit in here and I'm still gonna come through with some a little bit more color actually really like that um, I don't need to go too crazy because I don't need as much detail in here as I want or I whenever I'm doing a portrait of, a, of an animal like this I want the focus mo the majority of the detail right in here as I move out here oh look at the Skippy webcam yay um, as I move out here I, I put less and less detail okay let's take the black pencil and get that fur built up a little bit more Put a couple extra spots if I want them. Let that overlap a bit. Ah, I thought this would take me a full, like a lot longer. See, you, you do enough fur, you get really fast at it. Okay, let's see. Clean up that edge just a bit. Now let's start pulling in some other values, some darker colors. So typically, anytime I'm using these orangey colors, I'm gonna pull on some magentas. This one is actually, it's not magenta, magenta. This one is burnt carmine. So it's kind of a reddish color there. Let's start pulling this in some of the darker areas. So that's what's gonna be my transition between the oranges and the blacks in a lot of these areas. I don't have to do it everywhere, but it will give me a lot more depth if I start pulling this in. Oh, I'm missing an entire spot here. Whoop. And now my pencil flew across. Where did you go? Oh, there you are. Ah, yuck. Right in Gibson's slobber is where that pencil landed. Let's just go ahead and clean that off. Gibson, why can't you just eat the treat like a normal dog? You have to spit all over the floor. Oh. Uh, 
And where, oh yeah, the spot. I got distracted by Gibson drool. Ugh, that was a lot, that was gross. I was like, why is my pencil soaking wet? And then realized it was slime. You know, just a few of these strands, not all of them. I'm not going crazy. Like what you don't want to do, let me see if I've got a scratch piece of paper over here to demonstrate this. Good, I do. You're not just doing this. This is not going to look like fur. It's back and forth and it's overlapping. This is the movement that I'm doing. See how they kind of group together, cluster together, and then they'll build in sort of rows. You've got a mess there. This, I don't care how many lines you put of that, it's never going to look like fur. Well, I'm going to take a blue. I want like a light ultramarine blue. I don't want something. I want to go with my polychromos because I still don't want this to be too opaque for what I'm going to do. What are you? Cobalt blue green. That is the opposite of ultramarine. You might work. Oh, wait, you are a little bit darker. I think you're going to work. Just cobalt blue and then ultramarine. Mm, close enough. We'll just go with ultramarine. So let me sharpen this pencil. I'm going to start pulling some blues into the whites and especially on the shadowed areas. Oh, yeah, that's dark enough. So you're looking at the reference photo going, oh, there is no blue. What are you looking at? I, it's in the shadow. I know that that will look good because I've done it in other pieces. So that is why I'm going to add this. I can also add some of this if it'll show up. No, I'm going to need something a bit more opaque to show up on top of the black. Oh, a little bit it shows. I'm going to do a little bit of a line along the back so it's kind of backlit there. And this is going to make him look way more interesting. I'm not going crazy. I'm not trying to turn him into, what was it from Wizard of Oz, the horse of many colors or whatever. We're not going that crazy. I'm using a really light hand, just following the direction of the fur. I already did the direction of the fur. I don't have to, like the hard part's in there. I am just adding to what is already there, especially anything that I want a bit more in shadow. That was too much blue. Let's spread that out. I want it a bit more in shadow. If I want it a little lighter, um, do I have, you'll work. I do want you a little bit lighter there. Grab a wax based pencil. And actually, I'm gonna stage, I probably pretty soon here can do the whiskers, which is gonna make it look so much better. Always the best part. Man, I'm really liking how he came out. I'm gonna pull this down in a little bit more with the blue. Cause it just looks so good. Pull in a little in here. We'll do a little bit by the nose. A little bit over some of the black as well. And then we also have a little bit of that, what was it, the wood carmine, burnt carmine. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that in too. Especially we have this whole darker area here. I'll mix a little bit of the blue as well, but let's get some of that into that shadow. We start making them look more three-dimensional. I'm just very lightly going over that. Tinting the color. Oh, we've got some black spots back here I'm missing. Let me get some more ultramarine. Yeah, just layering right on top of some of that. Just pushing that into shadow. Let's do the same over here, just a bit. 
Okay, now if my whiskers don't show up, I've got a couple options on switching to different pencils, but my first attempt for all of these, especially it'll work for the outer edge, I want them to be lighter. So I'm gonna do this in with two. One with my white, which I will definitely get nice and sharp, but I'm also gonna use my gray. Do I have a lighter gray than this? I think I did, and I put it somewhere else. Eh, whatever, you'll work. I'm not just gonna jump straight to white. I want a lighter. We got our little eyelashes. On this one, it will be white. Make a few highlights on some of those. And then same thing, I'm gonna get some really, what, the gray, this is, what was that warm gray for, I think? Yeah. Get some variation, I'm not pushing hard with this pencil. Now I'll put a few of these that are white, I can push a little harder so those ones look a little thicker. And these are new ones, I'm not going over the gray, they're overlapping in a couple of spots, but out a little bit longer. Now over here, let's see, where do they come from? Here, and then they're gonna end out about here. These ones I am pushing harder because they're not gonna show up over all that pencil if I don't. So we've got a little, where is that guy? So you are here, you are here, you are the little whisker coming out there and you're going to need a little bit of a shadow where you came out i love the whisker stage okay and then if i want to just go through like i'm looking at mine going okay give me a little bit high more of a highlight and but it, also i kind of want it soft so i'm just using the side of my pencil where do i want a little bit more light Definitely could use some more white in here. I'm pretty happy with where he's at. I don't want to make too many changes. Let's see, a little bit more white in here. I think I would like to get a little bit of Mars orange though. Let me find it. Um, where are you? Nope, you're sandstone. I have two sandstones out apparently. You're Sienna. There you are. I think you're the one. Yep, Mars Orange. Oh yeah, that's gonna look nice. Just kind of going over a few of these areas, pulling that color out. I'm missing some black spots over here. I like some definition anyway with the ear. It's more of a shade, shadow than a spot. Same up here, I'm missing some whole big old spots. Let's fill some of that in. I'm just lightly going over this because this part, if it's a little grainy and gritty, great. I just added texture. I am okay with that. I've already got the texture of the fur. I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to lose the texture of the fur. Now when I use the black, I am pushing hard. Every time I say something, I end up contradicting it. But the, with the Mars orange, I'm not pushing hard. I want to see the fur I did underneath. I'm just lightly tinting that color. Pull a little blue into this. Where 
there's my white. Let's lighten up a little bit. And again, just building up texture. I'm using the side of the pencil so it's a little bit grainy and gritty. Gives me a little bit of texture. Oh, it looks so good. I wish you could see the texture clearly. It drives me crazy that that doesn't show on this camera right now. Normally that's not a huge deal, but tonight's there's so much great detail that I will have to show you separately. Now on the reference photo, we do have more white in here. I don't want to make that that bright. I'd rather the brighter areas really stay focused in the face, especially because we're, so we're on a black paper. It's never going to be as bright as it would on white paper, but so I'm going to use, just let this be a little bit darker so that that stands out more. Tilt this up a little bit in here. I am pushing a little bit harder here so that that'll show up because again, polychromous white, super translucent. I mean, compared to other white pencils. I can see my transfer paper line right there. I don't want to. There we go. That's better. Kind of. Now that's better. Okay. Now where I sign this is dependent on where the map lies. So let's move this out of the way. And I'll show you on the other camera what that really looks like. So that'll fit about like that. And I'm going to do my signature probably over here. Over here would look weird. Now you can't hardly see that. So what I will do is now take white and put a highlight on some of it. Kind of line it next to what I already did so it'll show up over the black but I'm not covering the black completely because some of that needs to show. Actually, my other alternative that is really not showing up. Another thing I can do, I'm just gonna erase this whole section. I'm gonna lighten and let it smudge out and I'll sign it with white. I'm using my fabric has still perfection eraser. Let me sharpen this pencil. Now it shows up nice, but it's not like, I don't want you to look at it. If I signed over here, it would be a little bit like, look at me. I want you to see the signature, but I don't want the focus to be the signature. I need to cut, fix a couple spots really quick and then we were, are done. I'll show you on the other camera. So you can see how this looks. Oh, I like this guy. Again, you can bid on him if you are in the US. The link is in the video description. Yeah, wow, he came out way better than I expected in this amount of time, like way better. Um, he actually looks really good for being this size too. So there is the finish. He will, is a five by seven. Well, matted, the overall mat size is eight by 10, but the inner portion is the five by seven. So there is the finished Jaguar. Yay! I need to do more, more furry critters for these because those I can do that, get done pretty quick. Okay. So I'll go through and start answering your questions. And before we get started, I do want to show you some of the changes I want to do on my, um, my studio. So right now, my art studio is a combination. This wall, I did a mural. It's mostly dark teals and like the paint kind of as blotchy with teal, dark, dark teal and grays. And I've got this tree kind of painted above there. Oh, there's not really any way for me to show it to you. But um, I mean, you can see it in some of my other videos. But this whole section of the room is all... They call it repose gray, which is dang near white. I hate it. I hate, I, I hate the white. I wanted it to fade out because I didn't, I like dark. I, my office, you guys have seen the video with that dark, dark gray. I love working in dark areas like that, but like getting the ambience with the lighting. So I never, I wanted this room because it's technically the master bedroom of the house, just not used as a bedroom. So I kind of didn't like, as much as I want it to look like an art studio, I'm like, but it's the master bedroom. I don't want to mess it up. And so I hate it because it's not what I ever wanted. So what I am going to do, I finally am like, you know what? I just, I need to make this look like 
something that I'm comfortable in. And also I, I'd like to not have to set this up behind me. Um, I'd like to just get that wall dark. That wall is lighter too. I want to get that painted. I'm going to do it this weekend. So hopefully that'll all be gone this week. I am changing so much in this room and this is the vibe that I'm going for. So that and was it th this one. So if any of you know how to make that tree branch, I don't even know where to find a tree branch like the one in the, this one, that. I need that tree branch. I know how to do the lighting. I don't know how to do, I need, where do I even get a branch like that? So um, do I make one? Do I, I don't know. I'm going to definitely have to figure out how to do that. So if you know, especially if you're on our Discord for a Patreon, please tell me. Um, for the windows, if you look at this, wait. Nope, this is weird. There we go, that one. <laughs> um, those windows, so I've got a bay window, which is beautiful, but it gives me the view of everyone else's roofs. Like it's not, it doesn't look like a fairy garden. Like what, like I want it to look like a fairy wizard, like apothecary is what I'm going, you know, like these dark, but also kind of have that fairy look because I read fairy books because I'm a crazy person. Um, but this one with the green windows, what I'm going to do, I can do gallery glass painting, which looks just like stained glass. It's going to look so good in video um, for those windows. So like if I'm film, I can actually film in here more right now, the lighting makes it so I can't really film in here in the day. I can't really like, it's just, Yes, so, um, and I've got an idea to use mirrors and still do the gallery glass above it so it'll look like the windows go up towards the roof. Like it'll just create an illusion of that. And the downside that I was a little bit mm, about the, um, the windows, if I put the gallery glass over it, some of my light, my plants are not gonna like it. So here's my alternative. The couple of plants that need really bright light, they can move into another room, so that's fine. But the rest of my plants, see those lanterns? I'm gonna put lanterns like right next to the plants sitting in them so with grow lights in them. So I get lanterns for the plants to keep those happy, but I'm gonna have lanterns freaking everywhere like this. The ambience with the lighting, the, the texture with l draping different fabrics, like this is all, I'm really excited about this. Uh, Joseph says burn the witch. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't have a cat, so I may have to borrow one of yours, Joseph. Um, yeah, that is my plan. I will be painting this weekend is the big, um, that's gonna be hard because I, it's not just a solid color. It's actually a mixture. I do, it's kind of this watercolor blotchy mixture. It gives a very soft velvety look between the dark teal and the gray and a lighter teal. Like it's all, use a lot of water to make them all kind of bleed into each other. But that will be done this weekend. I'm not gonna be able to move. If I cancel on Wednesday, you're gonna know why. Um, Cause my body died. So yeah, that is what I'm super excited about in the studio. I'm going to be moving this. I'm actually eventually, and I have to save it for this because this part, part's gonna be much, much more expensive. I'm gonna put barn door, a barn door. I've got a bath, my master bathroom is right there, but it's like, it just kills the ambience, even that door. I'm, I'm gonna be covering all of this, but the, um, I'm gonna do a barn door, but with the frosted glass windows, so I can put light behind it. So it gives you more of a, it'll look like windows and maybe, a windows to outdoors instead of the windows to my bathtub. So, you know, that's, um, those are the plans. I'm super excited. I will be sharing along with you. I'll be posting on, on, excuse me, on Patreon, on our Discord channel. Um, I'm sure I'll post those in, in progress photos, but I will be making a full video for YouTube as well. It's just that it's gonna take me months to get this done. Like, cause I can't afford the doors anytime soon. I can block it, I can cover them. So I can use parts of it. But um, yeah, the this is the gallery glass bay windows. I'll definitely show you how to do that. Cause that is going to look, and the greatest thing about the gallery glass is it's not permanent. You don't want it anymore, you peel it off. So, I mean, that would be expensive. You're not gonna change it all the time, but, and it is time consuming, but it's not like I'm permanently doing anything to the house. The, the walls being as dark as it was, I kept doing the whole, well, what if I move? I don't know, do you guys do this? What if I someday move and need to sell the house? No one's gonna want that in their master be bedroom. And I'm like, when am I gonna move? No one can afford with these interest rates. Like, it's not like I'm gonna move. I love my house. I just worry about like safety in the neighborhood continuing to have issues. We'll see. I think that happens in all neighborhoods though. So maybe I just need to calm myself down and get a dope. Berman. But because um, you guys won't bark, don't even warn me if someone's trying to get in and un alive us all. But anyway, um, that you know what would happen if someone tried to break in? That. That is what would happen. Actually, I'm not sure. Wade might bark. But anyway, um, that is the 
I realized like it's paint and I talked to my friend who's an interior designer and she's like it's paint you they can repaint like if somebody wants a house they can repaint it you're not doing anything like my floors are still super nice the things that are hard to fix would be nice they would just paint in the the gallery oh these windows seriously I'm gonna want to actually work in the day I never paint in the day because I hate how bright it is I just don't like a vampire oh crap I am a vampire maybe I'm a witch too but anyway yeah so I'm super excited and I will be sharing that as it goes. So anyway, moving on. Um, oh, we've got some bids for the leopard. It's actually letting me know this time. Oh, buddy, you got a home um, that's not mine. Okay. Yay for those of you who are bidding. So let me find, oh, come on. Why are you, why, why, Discord, seriously, we're just gonna, I'm watching a spinning wheel right now. Because there we go. Did we go up far enough? Okay. Um, Karen said, question. When uh, I used to do colored pencils, I didn't like the transparency. When you work with pan pastels and colored pencil on the monitor, it looks opaque. Is that the way it looks in person? It's a little transparent. I mean, you can, um, you can see the black of the paper through it. I'm just working that into the piece like that. I'm letting that, if I did the same thing on, um, on white paper, he's going to be way brighter, like brighter, way brighter. If I'm going to work on dark paper, I'm going to work that into the piece. Um, I have more control of the way my color comes out on white paper, but I've worked on black so much. I know what to expect. So I just work that into the design, but, um, it's, the pan pastels certainly make it more opaque, but the pencils you use make a difference. My Derwent Lightfest are some of my most opaque. They blend super nice. Uh, Derwent drawing, super opaque. If I want more translucents, I go over to my polychromos. Those are gonna be really good for glazing techniques. But I don't have a problem getting the opacity that I need. It's how you layer it. And this is the problem. If you're, if you're new to colored pencils, it's not like paint. So if I'm painting with acrylics and I'm like, oh, I painted the whole background blue and I now want a fish I wasn't planning on, I just paint where the fish is gonna go white. Now I can paint the reds, the yellows, whatever color I wanted on that fish. And it will, it's opaque enough because I put white down first that it'll show up. With colored pencil, you need to be doing more planning. You're not going to change your mind. And you do hit a point where you just can't get more layers. And the problem isn't really that the pencils are trans so translucent. It's that you, I mean, kind of it is. They, you can only stack so many layers. And if you're pushing hard, you can't get another layer to show up on top because you flatten the tooth of the paper. There's nothing for that pigment to stick to. It's just such a different medium. Like you have to think of it completely different when you're working. So I usually, if you see me do something surreal, typically gonna do oils and acrylics because I can easily change my mind and add to it as I build up. With colored pencil, I have to completely plan everything out. Every last bit of it, it has to be 100% planned out and drawn perfectly before I ever take a pencil to that paper. I can't easily, I mean, to an extent you can change your mind, but not like I can with acrylics. So yes, I've done surreal stuff with, with colored pencil, but I, it takes a lot more planning and it's not really... It's not so much that the pencils are translucent, it's that you're limited on how much you can layer. They're not gonna show up on top of each other if you have too much there. But if you layered with a light hand, you can, like, it's a hard one to explain. They're just a very different medium. So I don't find it to be the opacity, the issue I can get. It is easier for me to make something look insanely realistic with colored pencil, because that's how easy it is to get detail, than other mediums. But you've got a plan and you have to know how you layer to get certain looks and when you can push hard, when you need to keep a light hand so that you can keep getting layers. I don't know if that helps. That's a lot of rambling about colored pencil. Okay. Um... Python said, any tips for doing acrylic Patreon tutorials with oil? Uh, would the only thing that I would need to do is wait for it to dry? Is there more? You can typically for oil. So with acrylics, you know how, let's say I'll use the ocean scene again, I paint the whole background or whatever it is. I paint the whole background and I build up and layer with oils. It's a little bit different because I draw everything out and then I paint around because it dries so slow. You've got time to paint around. There's no reason for me to paint the whole background and then layer up because the dry time, that's just gonna take too long. So with oils, I definitely build it up a lot different. Um, but besides that, yeah, you can do the same thing. I would just draw it out. You can use a regular graphite pencil if you're gonna work with oils. I draw my entire, like what I'm gonna be doing 
on the straight on the canvas like I, whereas acrylics you know I paint my background and then I use a white charcoal pencil to draw it out so that's going to be my main difference between the two as far as how I work um but like the layering details fur the colors that that's all going to be the same that applies very well to both Have I ever tried using colored pencils over acrylics? No, because there's no tooth to it. Acrylics are a plastic, so it's super, super smooth. The only exception might be if you were working on paper and you thin the acrylics down so that they were almost like a watercolor, a colored pencil could stick over that. So that would be one way to make that work. But like on a canvas, it's too smooth. Like it, it's not gonna stick. It's not gonna show up very well. A little bit, depending on the pencil color you use and what's underneath it. But I don't see the value in doing that. I don't think it's gonna look terribly good. So it's not one I would do. Uh, the, the only exception I can think of is on paper with super thinned out acrylics. And I would not gesso the paper in that case. I would be using acrylics like water, watercolor where I want them to soak in. So that would look cool. Um, oops. Oh, my back is already giving me the finger tonight. Oh, hold on. Old lady stretch. Ow. Okay, it's trying to, the type of arthritis I have makes it want to fuse together. So it's like, break it up. Don't fuse. I'm sorry. Too much information. Moving on. We have, um, Fly Meeting in the Moon said, someone in this chat said, funny thing, uh, Said a funny thing once. The hounds say, I love these nights. Mom talks to herself and feeds his treat when she says super chat. Don't say it loud. No one lifted their head. Wade looked at me, but he didn't even lift his head, so he knew I didn't finish it. Uh, Deborah said, should we use our a overhead light when drawing? Does it make it too bright? Um, like I saw. So I've got a daylight light bulb. Oh, I may not have it linked in my description. It was probably on my website under supplies. But I have a bulb right, of, uh, it's a, it's like a stick. Um, that moves out, but it's a daylight bulb. It's, uh, you can get them from Amazon and they're not terribly expensive. It's a lot cheaper than the Ot lights used to be in these. I actually like a lot better than the Ot lights, but yeah, it's an LED daylight bulb and that's going to help your eyes not to feel as strained. And it's also going to help you to see your colors more accurate. If you use a regular bulb, you may go out the next day and realize, whoa, this is really blue. And I thought it was more of a grayish tone because you had a warmer bulb or something like, you know, your bulb wasn't quite daylight. So yeah, a daylight bulb is what you want to use. And this one has three settings, so I can turn it from like brighter to lower. Um, Denise said, I'm new at Pan Pastels. Acrylic and oils is my choice. Trying to get excited about the medium, been painting since 2018. You've been my favorite teacher. Oh, thank you. Um, oh, those were from, uh, were those the Patreon ones or the next ones are Patreon? I think those, no, those ones I don't think were. Um, yeah, those were the YouTube ones. Uh, Pan Pastels. Just give it a give it a little bit of practice. It's definitely one of those. I did like it from the beginning, but it's definitely one of those. The more I use it, the more that I love it. The more I get used to and get comfortable using the soft tools. That's like painting with a palette knife. So it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to painting with a palette knife and to have the control to get your edges nice and smooth. I'm pointing at something you can't see. But yeah, it is um, it is going to take a little bit of practice. Don't get discouraged. The more you do it, at least for me, the more I used it, the more I loved them. And I loved them at first. But not like I do now. Now it's like, it's, God, they make everything go faster. So from Patreon, we have a question from Anna said, some of my Pam Pastels get firm and almost shiny uh, film when I'm using them. I don't think I'm pressing too hard. Any ideas what I could do differently? It might be your humidity. That might make a difference. Um, I know, like I use my powder makeup, the It Cosmetics, they have the powder makeups. And some of them, if it was too humid in my bathroom when I had opened the thing, the container, it seems like it gets a film that I have to kind of scrape off the top of the actual uh, palette of for that. So I'm wondering if that is what's happening with your Pam Pastels, if it's an issue of the humidity. Is it more humid where you're at? If it's dry, then that's not going to be the case. Um, hopefully spraying the, the Spectra Fix might help. But I'm not sure because I've not run into that. The only thing I can think of is, is more humidity and maybe putting it on thick, a lot thicker than what I am. But honestly, I'm not positive. What you can do, if you have something like that happen, contact the company and ask them directly because they should have better answers for you on something like that. It's just because I've not experienced it, I can't say for certain. Those are just, those are complete theories on my end. Um... Fly Me to the Moon said, would it be a hard thing for you to put your line drawing up with a tutorial? I have an easier time with a line drawing than the animal. Okay, so I was going to not ever do that because I do think it slows you down. You are better off drawing the photograph because if my line drawing is a little too far to the left, a little too far to the right, and it will always be a little off every time. 
Now yours is going to be a little off from that. Now you're that much further in act, like away from being accurate to the reference photo, the more times that keeps, you know, you're tracing and you're not going to learn to draw as well. However, there was a case recently within our, our Patreon Discord group, somebody had traced it and it's like that she wasn't seeing the same lines I'm seeing. And so it definitely, I think would have helped to in her, like I did actually give her a line drawing. So it's something people ask for enough, but part of me doesn't want to do it because it's a crutch. Not because it takes me that much longer to do. I mean, an extra, what, 10 minutes a week. It's not that big of a deal for me to do it. So it's not just me being like, oh, I'm lazy. I'm not going to do this for you guys. It's, I don't want you using it as a crutch. But someone showed me recently where she, she needed it. She really did. And her work should improve drastically having, it was a, a fox I had to draw for her. And I'm like, uh, every once in a while, I think somebody would benefit, but it's fairly rare. So I may start providing it with a disclaimer of, I don't recommend using it. I don't, re I tra trace the photograph. Your work is going to be so much better if you learn to trace the photograph. However, maybe it is possible that some of you guys are going to improve better if you can trace the tracing first a few times to see what I'm looking at. And then after a few pieces go to tracing the photograph. So I may start breaking my own rule of, I don't want to provide it because I don't want you to be, I want you to be able to trace a photograph because it's going to be so much more accurate, but I may, I may start doing that. Um, let's see. Rhonda said, I only have colored pencils. Would I go over the black paper with the white pencil first and then add the actual color I need for it to show up better? No, I would do, um, so go watch the collie that I just finished. Go watch part one where I was doing the fur around the face especially and then part two where I started on the muzzle. Watch how, look at how I made, I layered a, ba a dark color. So again, you're on, this is from Patreon, so I know you've got access. Those videos are available for you right now. But I did a darker tone and then put my lights on top of it, but I don't push hard. So that's very different. Like what I'm working on tonight, I'm pushing harder because I'm not doing a bunch of layering. But that collie, because it's going to be photorealistic, I'll show you. Let me grab him really quick. Um, I did a darker kind of mid-range tone and then put my light colors over that. But I had to use a very, very light hand. Okay, so here's the collie that I'm talking about. Let's see if I can get that in the right. It's a little overexposed here. This color is way like more rich in person, but that gives you an idea of the details. Um, maybe if I turn this so it's not so bright. Eh, kind of, that's a little bit more accurate, I guess. But that guy, the, to get the fur to look like this, I did a mid-range tone and then the white, same thing. I did a dark, like I used um, Mars Violet and then put the white on top of that. So no, in this case, I would not put the white down first unless it's an area you need to stay super white. But I put, um, go watch that video because you'll see what I'm talking about where I layered in multiple light layers of a mid-range tone and then built lighter and darker from that. Okay. Um, what are my questions? Come back. Um, I lost it, man. Okay. Where were we? Okay. Maybe I read that question wrong. If I only have, oh, okay. I totally read that wrong, by the way. Let's try that again. If I only have colored pencil, wait, did I get that one? I think I was mixing that one and the one below it. Okay, let's read that again properly. Not that the information I shared was incorrect, but it didn't answer your question. Um, Rhonda said, if I only have colored pencils, would I go over the black paper with the white pencil first and then add the actual color I needed for it to show up better? No, I wouldn't because I think you could for some individual strands, but if you do it everywhere, you are really limiting how many layers you can get on top. In that case, I would jump to like the, the Derwent drawing or Derwent drawing or the Derwent light fast. Those are really opaque. Karen Dosh luminance, if you've got those, those aren't gonna be as opaque usually, but I would just start layering in the fur with those. Um, just, you know, get a solid base of that and then start putting in your individual strands and then your white over that. But I would do light layers first to get kind of a base of that color, but I wouldn't do white first because the white, when you put your other colors on top of it, it's just going to be a little bit too pastel. 
So I would find like sandstone. I would do a few of sandstone. I would probably blend with OMS in between those. So you get that soft base with that. Now, when you put OMS over it, odorless mineral spirits, and so I did sandstone everywhere. Put OMS on it, especially on a dark paper. It's going to look dark, like scary dark. When it dries, it's going to lighten way up. So just be warned there. Don't be afraid that it got too dark. It's, you're going to have to put a few layers to get it that dark. Okay. Reading comprehension. I'm failing. Um, Jason said, is the background going to stay all black or will there, there be some color to give difference from the background? Nope, it stays black because it's a live stream and we've only got so much time um, and those spots took forever. Uh, Deb said, do you prefer, uh, oh good, Deb, oh no, you're commenting on the Patreon. Are, Deb, are you, did we figure it out? I need to look up and see, for some reason, um, Deb's not been able to comment in the chat. I'm not sure why. Deb said, do you prefer Me Tens over Pastel Matte? Uh, I noticed you've been using Me Tens more. Me Tens is a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. So for doing a quick one hour project, I'm not gonna use my more expensive paper. Um, it's really as simple as that. I have not used the pastel mat enough to have to like give a good opinion on. I love this one. I love this one more. The reason though for the live stream, it's not an issue of me liking one more than the other. It's just it's a cheaper paper and it's colored, so that works. It works really well for what I'm doing, and for, especially for to get stuff done quickly. Um, if I was doing pastel mat, I would have to charge a lot more um, to make up the difference in the cost. Well, maybe not a lot more, but more. Um, Art of Raven D said, I think doctors also overlook things due to age. Oh, you're 16, you're too young to have certain problems. Oh, absolutely happened to that with me. We also had one doctor where if my dad went, who's a bit on the hypochondriac side of, of life, he, um, this doctor would spend so much time, like he would just figure out whatever was going on every time. Dr. Brown, I think was his name. Um, if me or my mom went, oh, we were dismissed so fast. He definitely had a weird thing with women, like not taking us as seriously. So sometimes that happens with doctors. That was back in like the 90s. But he was definitely a little, um, I wasn't a fan. He definitely did not take me and my mom nearly, my dad, my dad thought the hangnail was like end of the world. And of course, Dr. Brown was going to do everything for my dad. But me and my mom, yeah, no, he did not take it seriously. Although, as much as I say that, he was the first doctor who, it, who told me that my wrist was arthritis. Everyone before that, so maybe this was 2000, I don't know. Everyone before that was like, here, wear a wrist brace. You have carpal tunnel from overuse for violin that you don't ever practice. Um, he, so he, my wrist finally locked up where I had like, my move, I could move it like this. That was it. It was so bad. It was mostly locked like that from being in the brace that the doctors kept making me wear. He's like, yeah, that's arthritis. So um, I, I had, a, I went to a Christmas party with Matt. I had two drinks that night and I normally didn't drink at all. So that was enough. I'm like waving my hands in the air and it broke up where it had locked it, like it, it forms, um, it starts to fuse, it locked it, it loosened it up. And yeah, sure enough, it was the arthritis. So that was, he did, as much as I complain about him not taking seriously, he did give me one bit of good advice. Um, so, you know, that was helpful or not advice. He told me what it was and he said, he's like, we can x-ray it, but we know what it is. So, or I can tell you that's what it is right now. He was, he was correct. Um, anyway, random side story. Fran said, you see it notifications on my email about discord messages. I don't get those anymore. Having trouble getting on discord, not a computer person. Am I doing something wrong? I have no idea. I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of a computer person, but not when it comes to discord at all. Like I am a failure when it comes to that. Joseph, maybe you can help. Joseph knows Discord. He fixes my problems. Um, I don't know how to make the messages give email notifications. I'm sure there's something in settings. I don't know. Mine doesn't send, no, mine doesn't send emails. I just open the app all the time. Um, oh, <laughs> Nick says, okay. Nick says, the Patreon tag was a subtle hit for you to give a plug to your Patreon channel. Okay, whoops. I just spit to make it extra classy. So while I'm being classy, let me do a plug for my Patreon. Um, if you have not already, if you like this lesson, if you want to take your artwork even further for as little as $6 a month, you get access to all of my tutorials. There are over 400 because I've been uploading them since 2000, end of 2014. I've got a lot, a lot. I think there were over 600 hours of lessons available for you. So in multiple mediums, there's something in there for everybody. $6 a month gets you access to all of those instantly. So definitely check that out, patreon.com slash lawcree. And then depending on what tier you want, you can get more stuff. But yeah, that Kali lesson you just saw, if you're on Patreon, you get to draw that. You draw that with me. I'll teach you how to do that. Um, it looks better in the photo because this is overexposed under these lightings. But anyway, 
these lightings. Oh God, I can't talk. I'm really tired. Um, or my brain is just too excited about what I plan to do on the studio upgrades. Let's see. Uh, Art of Raven D said, I was watching an old projector video from you recently. I'm looking to save for a projector. I can free him, but sometimes I just want to get the painting portion quicker. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why I use a uh, projector, just to save time. I have to get, I want to get, I'm more worried about how much artwork I can get done and I want to get tons of lessons for everybody. If I have to spend a week perfecting a drawing, I'm not getting many lessons done and I can, I can draw it. It just takes longer. Let's just save the time. I am all for that. So yeah, huge fan of digital projectors. Although from what I learned, you guys actually told me that artograph sold to another company and they say that it's not as good. I don't know. I've not tried them, but yeah. So that's a thing. Um, Dolphin Soul said, how do you decide for projects what's going to work best to use OMS with colored pencil versus using pound pastel? Mm, depends on what mood I'm in. I can make both work. If I want tons, like if I want it super, super realistic, I'm going OMS every time. Like that Kali, if I'm doing a portrait and I want it super realistic, OMS. Pen Pastel, I feel, gives me a little bit more of a stylized look. It's still realistic, but it's not, it's, it looks more like art. If I want to go m take it further where I've got cleaner lines, everything's super clean, so it looks more like a painting. I guess that's a good way to explain it. If I want it to look more like a painting, then uh, colored pencil with OMS. If I want to, or even powder blender, because I have not done that in way too long. I need to do some lessons. I love powder blender on sanded paper. So amazing. But, sorry, itchy nose. Um, if I want that softer look, or if I want, um, it, it's, it looks like a drawing more with the pan pastel. So I just get a different look. Not, and I don't wanna say pan pastels can't look more realistic. That's just what I'm choosing to get, depending on the effect I'm going for. And then we have, thank you from Michael Tompkins. We've got a super chat, thank you. Wait, are you my friend Michael Tompkins with the Corgi or are you a different Michael Tompkins? Cause it's kind of a common name. I don't know, let me know. Thank you so much. The boys say thank you. Boys, do you want a super chat from Michael? You get a super chat. See, thank you. Oh, this is very good. There you go. Thank you so much. The boys say, oh, lots of chomps. As much as I hate ASMR, we should put a, a mic down by them so you can really hear them enjoying their treats. Um, go lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down. Okay. Um, Oh, he said it's from Enzo. It is my friend, Michael. Thank you. Um, our trip that Matt still does not know we're planning as a surprise for Matt. And I don't want to say too loud because he's in the other room. It's still on and our weather is finally going to be like perfect for that. So I need to, to I need to schedule that. Um, I will let you and uh, yeah, you will, I'll let you guys know. Okay. Um, scrolling up. Wait, do we have? Oh, Flaming Lou said, okay, that was me. I needed the crutch. Okay, so see, yeah, you were the person for the tracing that made me realize in your case, I think it helps. I think it's gonna make a really big difference for you. And so at least a couple of them. So yeah, I might, I'm thinking the line drawings, I may start, I may finally, you may have convinced me that it is a value for some students because everyone does learn different and I understand that. But I hate to, I, I just, I want you guys to improve as fast as possible, but you definitely showed me where I think that maybe the line drawing is gonna help you improve faster because we all learn differently. So I think that you have convinced me after all these years of me being stubborn, I think I'm gonna one by one go back through a lot of my tutorials and provide the line drawing. Now on some of them, if it's something that I did from wildlife reference photos, for example. So in the meantime, if you are on Patreon and there's a specific lesson, you're like, I want a line drawing for this, let me know and I'll let you know if I can provide the line drawing. If it's from wildlife reference photos or somewhere where I purchased the reference photo, you have to show me the receipt, like email me the receipt that you purchased or let me know that you did purchase it, then I can provide the line drawing. So I can't just provide that to everybody because you have to have purchased it or I'd be violating their, their rules and their rights, so. Um, but yeah, I think fly me to the moon. I think you convinced me. Um, yes. Okay. Let's see. Joseph said, actually take a cat six is too much. Oh no, it was Art of Raven D. Take a cat six is too much. Um, oh, we've got from CMS. Steph said, powder blender would love to see you do more. Yes. 
Absolutely. Also, boys. Gibson knows. Do you want another super chat? <laughs> Look how quick Wade gets up. Slowest animal for a race dog. He's normally really slow, except when there's a super chat. Then he's instantly super fast, huh? There you go. Good boys. It's very tasty, huh? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for the slobber, boys, on my hands. Um, okay, go lay down. Lay down. Gibson, down. Boys, down. You too, bad cow. Go lay down. Lay down. All the way. Wade's like, man, I was going to get in that bed. Okay. Um, scrolling back up. Where were we? Okay, I got that one. Um, oh, Deb said, I did mess with YouTube today, and I guess something did work for me. And No, I didn't change anything, so whatever you did was what, what worked. Good. Sometimes it's, you could, like if somebody commented and a mod like clicked the wrong thing, it would be possible for one of us to accidentally like block the wrong person. I have that pop up sometimes. I'm like, no, no, I didn't mean to do that. So um, I'm glad that wasn't the case here. Uh, Fleming of the Moon said, I'm still working on the fox. I had to repaint the whole head. Now I'm going to get it all smooth again. You know, it's good practice. It was very good practice. Um, let's see. Um, we've got still, God, I got this done early enough. We've got almost 15 minutes. I don't know what you guys want to talk about unless you want me to tell you more about my studio. I don't know what else I'd tell you about it. Um, so yeah, that is, we still have, I'll show you the leopard again. There's the leopard if you want to bid on that guy. Wait, can I get it so that he's I'm trying to get to where you can see the details right about there is where it's most clear. The color is really accurate on that camera. And then again, he's going to come matted him in there how that will be matted he will look about like that in the mat I can't really hold that up my bit wrist doesn't bend quite that far but that's what he's gonna look like matted okay let's move you out of the way okay oh, we've got comments Ow. um Selvinsold said, any advice to do underwater light rays in ink tents? Oh, where did, um, since the white goes so translucent, then scary opaque when it dries. I would do it white, and it's going to be too opaque, and then I would glaze the color right over it, and that's going to push it back a little bit. It'll soften it right up. So yeah, I would do it with the white, dry it, and then go over it. Also, somebody said something about ink tents recently. Where did I see this? And I'm wondering if this is why I don't really have, because a lot of people have told me that they have a hard time with it reactivating. It may be because I'm making mine so hot. Somebody said that the heat sets it. I didn't know that. So, and I use so, the hair dryer so much, that might be why mine is not smudging and smearing out like a lot of other people's are. I wonder if mine, I'm just getting hotter than everyone else with the hair dryer. Also, we have from Rob said, I cannot have you be smirching Wade's good name. He is such a good guard dog. <laughs> um, speak, sir, down, Wade, cow, lay down. It's like, B -b 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 my, my spirit human just gave me a treat. Okay, you can have a super chat. He's like, I think you're going to fool me. <laughs> He's like, you can't fool me again. I don't believe you. Come on, Wade, come get a super chat. Come on. You want a super? There you go. <laughs> back up. You have to wait for the word. You can't just decide to get up. What's funny is that was Wade trying so hard to be good, but he's just not a smart animal. Sweetheart, but dear God, that dog is not bright. Um, so that was his like, wait, I heard the word. I'm not sure if that was, did you mean it? Did you, are you trying to trick me this time? That is funny. Go boys, go lay down. Go lay down. Come on. Down. Gibson. Enough. Down. All the way back over. Good boys. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Oh my gosh. Um, Python said, I'm sick of only seeing those viral drawings on Instagram and YouTube, those photorealistic pencil crayon drawings of lime lips and other things like that. Your thoughts, lime lips. Do I wanna Google that? I'm afraid to Google that, or not Google, but Instagram that. I don't know. I actually don't look at Instagram that often. Um, uh, 
Oh, is that a, a, a count? Or, oh, there's somebody with lip. Huh. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing with that type of art. Such good practice. The artists who get really good at that, they can apply it to better stuff later, more creative stuff. So there's that. So I'm not like mad about it or anything. I'm not interested in it. Um, I would probably tell Instagram, if you, you can tell it like X out that you're not interested in that or that content. So the more like, the more you hit like, the more you comment on stuff you do like, the more of that sort of thing you're, you're gonna see on Instagram. So you can kind of curate a bit more. But yeah, all the photos, the super realistic stuff of lips, I mean, it's impressive and it's good practice. So I'm not mad about it, but also like if that's all the artist does, I'm not interested in that artist either. So I mean, people could say the same thing about me. They're like, all you do are animals and you don't do enough surrealism stuff lately. I'm gonna fix that. I need to do more surrealism. But um, yeah, I'm. it's not my thing, but you can kind of control your feed a little bit by just make sure the stuff you do really like, comment and like it, and you are more likely for that to come up on your post and then hide. Anytime you see something like that, you're not interested in, block them or mute them. You can mute the account so you don't have to see it. Um, Let's see, Fly Me to the Moon said, did you design the windows for the studio? How will you paint them? So the way that I'm gonna do it, it's a product called Gallery Glass. And you, it goes on, it's kind of opaque, and it goes out kind of wavy a little bit. So it's like, it looks like stained glass from a distance. When you're up close, it's obvious that you painted it. But in video, that's gonna look amazing and it'll just completely change the vibe of the room in here. You can get window film, and I considered it because it would be so much easier but it's gonna look so good. Like it really will look like stained glass. You use um, the um, liquid lead to get your lines to pattern that out. And I'll make liquid lead strips and move them. So they're kind of, it'll, I want it to look like an old stained glass kind of design. I don't know if I want to go with, I don't think I want to do images. At first I was thinking, well, do I, I could do a crow and I could do, wow, I'm really going with that witchy vibe aren't, or witchy thing, huh? Um, I'm, no, I'm not, I, I'm Christian. I'm Chris, I swear, I'm not a witch. But um, I want to do kind of just a general pattern, like shapes more. Um, like just old stained glass. I don't know. I'll, I'll check. I may end up doing something floral. I'm not going to go crazy with a million. Maybe I will do a million colors. I don't freaking know. I don't think it's going to be a million colors. I think I'm going to stay with greens and greens, grays and teals. So that is, I will record how I do that. Cause it's a, and you just take the paint and you kind of go and swirl. So you get that wavy look and it looks like stained. It looks really cool. It's going to look cool from both inside and outside. The other thing that I'm really liking about doing this right now, I have blinds in here and I do not, um, I think you can see them with the boy. Yeah, you can see those blinds. So like the two inch blinds or inch and a half, whatever they are, the thicker blinds. And I don't, I don't take the time to close them at night because I don't sleep in here. But also I'm like, if we end up having crime issues and somebody does jump the fence, I don't want them seeing my camera equipment all sitting out here. That's a little bit too, I think, enticing. So, I mean, if someone jumps the fence and they're gonna break in, they're gonna break in either way. But let's not, like if I have that, it's not an issue of closing the blinds anymore. They're just always, like it will create a lot more privacy. Um, like all around, it's gonna be awesome. And I can still open the window with it. Like it doesn't make it so you can't open the window. So um, I just can't, like I can slide it up, but I'm not going to be able to, like the window has to be open for the light to come directly in. So that's kind of a, yeah, anyway. Um, but I will record that. Moody Roan said, are you going to film the studio transformation? Pretty please, absolutely. Like, absolutely I am. Um, and I've got footage from what it looked like when I first moved in four years ago. So I'm gonna include all of that. Like, so you can just kind of see the progression of how I got here and how I finally hit a point of, I keep not, I, I'm being lazy. I don't wanna paint the walls, but oh my God, it'll, it'll look so much better. Everything, everything like right behind me, you can't see, but I've got curtains to help with other things. And this strip of white repose gray it looks white strip of white and then the curtain it's just there's it's too you know i love my contrast i don't like contrast like this in a room i want everything to just be softer and darker and it's going to be amazing you'll see parts of it next week if if all goes well and i don't like fall off a ladder it'll be done the painting portion will be done um this weekend i'm so anxious i may start it tomorrow because i think i still have some from this wall maybe i'll start at least the portion around the mural because that's going to be kind of a pain anyway um Jason said, how are the frog legs? All of the frogs and their legs are doing great. I actually have tadpoles. Want to see my tadpoles? I don't know if you can really see them. Um, no, you, you wouldn't be able to see them. I have tadpoles for my Santa Isabel dart frogs because I'm going to be Dragon's old 40-gallon tank. I'm going to turn into a big, big vivarium for um, right now there's is 
I'm gonna say 18 by 24 by 18. I don't know, I just saw someone hop by. Um, but I'm gonna make it bigger and the tadpoles that I'm raising will hopefully, if that goes well, well, it's the first time of me trying to raise tadpoles, will give me more, more of the sound of crickets on crack. Um, that is the Santa Isabel, that's what a Santa Isabel dart frog sounds like, they're amazing. But yeah, I'm going, that's another upgrade for the studio. That will, that's gonna happen later, but that will go on this table and be really long. I moved my tarantula into my office, so that gives me more space on this. Plus it turns out they're really sensitive to smells, so oil painting in the room with her probably wasn't a good idea. So she's in my office where it's nice and safe with my, I got new jumping spiders this weekend too. Um, I got two regal jumping spiders that are adorable. Oh my God, the photos. Anyway, um, so fluffy. But yeah, all frogs are doing great. Um, oops, that just jumped too far. Here we go. Python said, I live off your surreal marine pieces. More please, definitely. I want to do so much more marine. I have a couple of like normal stuff planned. I want to do footsteps in the sand for a, a painting. I want to do, because I want to show somebody how to do that. Um, I have my friend Teresa, her dog, I want to draw. Yeah, oh, I want to do a common a mixed media with water soluble graphite and colored pencil. So it's going to be really cool. Or watercolor. I don't know, something with color. But um, yeah. Um, but I'm going to, and the stained glass window thing, that's going to happen soon. I'm probably going to order the stuff to do that this weekend. Like I'm going to be getting started very, we may actually, depending on how far I am, I wonder how, no, it would be, my setup can't really move. I was going to say it'd be cool to live stream working on that, but the way it is, there's not really an easy way to make that happen. Never mind, I take it back. Um, Jason said, could you get someone to create a stained glass window? Um, that you like for the room. I would need four very large stained glass windows. That is, I, in this economy, no one's got, no one can afford that. Um, that is, I don't know if you know how much work that is or how expensive that would be. That is a no. Um, that is a lot. Yeah, no, that is just not an option. And what I want is fine. I actually like the look of gallery glass, so I'm okay with it. Um, and I don't want to put real stained glass in this room because if we ever do sell a house, I can't take that with me and the buyers may not want it in like a master bedroom is kind of weird to have so i don't know um oh we have from moody roan says uh, treats for redemption cow and huff daddy <laughs> do you guys want a super chat thank you so much back up back up you're drooling on my arm gibson getting a little close there sir thank you those are the stinkiest treats. Your next ones, the ones you like better aren't as stinky, so it's good all around. These ones have better ingredients though, so there's that. Go lay down, 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 down. Um, somebody called you a redemption cow, and that face, when I just told you to lay down, no, you go lay down, sir. The, see, look at what happens, this is what happens. This is, that is a bad cow. Cow, lay down, lay down. Fine. You're not such a redemption cow now, huh? Lay down. <laughs> um, let's see. Fleming Moon said, so you can't see them from out, uh, see in from outside. When the gallery glass is on there, it would look just like stained glass. Like you're, it would be so muted. You wouldn't be able to see, like you could see shadows moving in here, but that would be it. So it's just like actual stained glass. Um, it's gonna look so good, so excited. Uh, let's see. We're at 9.58. So we're about done. Thank you guys so much for joining. We've got two more minutes on the auction. So congratulations to whoever gets to have Mr. Jaguar here. I don't think it, yeah, whenever I, I wish you told me when I pulled these up. Oh no, I can see who won that or is in the lead there. I can't see the name. I recognize that one. Um, so whoever wins, congratulations. Jason said, Lisa, my mom learned how to create it and create it and her and my cousin worked on it, but yep, large area would be expensive. Yeah, and it's a whole bay window. So you're talking, I think it's like 34 inches wide by 56 tall and there's four of them. Yeah, I'm not getting real stained glass. That is for dang sure. Um, I'm doing the, uh, I'm going to do the dollar store version. And it's not even dollar store because gallery glass itself is, is still, the paint I'm going to use is not super cheap for the size I need, but it's going to be so worth it. 
um, business expense because, you know, studio. But yeah, anyway, that is my, that is the plan. It is a much more cost efficient way to go, that's for sure. And it'll, it'll be a cool video and it's going to look, oh, it's going to look so good. I'm so excited, you guys. Okay. Thank you so much. And I will be talking to you next week. Make sure to check out our moderator's channels. Links are in the video description. We've got more live streams. If you want to chat while they're working, it's usually the same group that's in this chat. So, you know, get some already friends and thank you so much. Um, all right. Fleming said, thank you so much for all you do. Hey, could you make the stained glass? Uh, make the stained glass? No, no, I cannot. I'm going to be painting that. But it, seriously, if you look up, I would say look up gallery glass, but most people who used it aren't that great at it. Like most stuff I see is like crafty stuff. I used to teach it, so I got really good at it. Um, plus it's painting and it's me, so I know how to paint. So that makes it easier. But it, it's thick. It's like, think of colored Elmer's glue. Like it goes on thick like that um, and it dries clear. But it actually probably is Elmer's glue. I think it smells just like Elmer's glue too. I think I just found the formula, but it's, yeah, it's going to be really cool. I'm super excited. Um, and the goal is it'll look like an art. Wait, what did I say? I wanted it to be fairy wizard apothecary art studio. That is what I'm calling the style I am going for. Um, cluster. Oh, I can't finish the last word I wanted to say on my channel. A cluster. Oh, that word is worse. I can't think of an alternative. Anyway, we are done. Thank you guys. I am going to go plant some terrariums for my new jumping spiders because the plants came right before I had a strain. So we've got some new setups going for them. Um, I will talk to you guys again in next week. I don't know what we're doing next week. It'll be something. And hopefully the room will be painted by then. At least that's part of the way. I'll see you guys. I feel like I'm forgetting something I need to announce. I don't know what it is. I rambled enough. Bye. Yeah.